All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Moon Duck coverage of the Northern Arena Beat Invitational presented by Bell Main Qualifier Playoffs Winner Bracket Finals Game Number Three of a Best of Three, Infamous versus NP. It is all going down here. Loser drops down to the lower bracket to face off against FDL. Winner moves on to the Grand Finals happening tomorrow. I'm Android, being joined by Mott Packs. What's up, dude? Oh, nothing. Just ready. Game number three, as predicted. I mean, we knew it was coming, right? Come on. NP, they're not going to go out like that. <laughs> and uh, Infamous putting out more of a fight than I think a lot of people were expecting. And can certainly close this one out in game number three. They won't have the drow for their own takings this time. That is what gave them game number one. But uh, I don't know. I thought solid drafting in the second game. Just uh, maybe the lane's not going too well. Didn't really get... Like, they had two auto-lose lanes, Kong. which... Makes the game kind of hard when uh, playing Infamous, so a bit stronger this time with the Kunkka and the Batrider. Yeah, Infamous not holding back. They're like, all right, it's time to go. Let's pick up some control. They had a couple control problems last game. They had some damage problems as well, but hopefully things go better for them. Their lanes have been pretty good altogether. Um, no, NP, they grab up the Shadow Demon. Um, so Infamous not going to let them have the full Shadow Demon Kunkka duo. What else can you put with the Shadow Demon to have a huge impact? Oh, well, they already got the... Uh the jug, so that's nice, right? Um, sometimes people have run into like a little bit of trouble if you like grab jug or something, and there's an OD, and you're, you know, it's it's some sort of a hero that gives you an awful time in the mid lane. But the razor's banned out, and the OD are banned out, so jug's gonna have a, a relatively good time, right? Like nothing's gonna be totally awful if you end up sending him mid. Uh, doesn't seem to be their big style, right? They like Kataro on maybe those more active and um, devastating heroes like his TA or Storm Spirit or something like that. But Jug is a stat carry, so he's totally fine going position one. He gets the illusions made, and uh, life is good. Finn is nice up against the Batrider, too. If you can get it off before the lasso actually connects, then you're like drag through fire, not taking too much damage, and you already have the Shadow Demon for the disruption up against the Bat. So, so far, so good from both drafts. I think uh, like Kanka is just as good up against Batrider as Shadow Demon is. We've seen plenty of people using that X way too, especially um, yesterday was doing an excellent job saving his allies with it. Yeah, I mean, Elder Titan and Faceless Void are still available for the pickup here. We're going into our next round of bans. Nick's taken out, no surprise. Ursa's also been putting in a lot of work there. Uh, so unfortunately, Aoi not going to give us pause on that one again. Uh, no, NP are going to be on the Radiant this time, so switching things up a little bit, but that shouldn't really affect too much. Yeah, the, uh, the Ursa, maybe even a Sven ban too, just uh, the two best cores up against Juggernaut. Um, and Sven also does nicely uh, up against like Illusion Spam and stuff like that too. Uh, dire side, maybe it's a little bit easier to control up your Ancients, you might say. So you can get a little bit more benefit from those Ancient Heroes. Speaking of which, where are the Axes at, man? Yeah, we haven't seen any Axes today when it just offers so much control. A really, really strong jungler. You can come out, just grab your blink, grab a blade mail, and just mess everyone up. Wouldn't be too bad here, honestly, um, for Infamous if they could work it in. I guess they have the Bat Rider, so I'm assuming they'd want to throw in the off lane. It, uh, it might only be coming up for MSS this game. But there's that TA ban we were talking about. Definitely a go to hero for Kataro, so not too surprising that we see Bandit from NP as. Uh, oh, yeah, I had. Uh, I was talking like Kataro was going to be on the jug, I suppose. So this is a uh, this is the NP Shadow Demon jug. I was just talking about how they're on Radiant Mob. No, no, I know, I know, I know you did. <laughs> I, I was. That, that's what tipped me off. Was you? Hey, was you I was gonna that. say that. Can I have some credit yeah. for saying that Nakes? The Batrider. The Nakes. Yeah, uh, I mean the infest bombs just coming in. Batrider, you drag the prey straight to his open mouth, and Kunk got lots of control tools there as well. Uh, so infamous. It's a little bit out of flavor to have the Bat Life Stealer, but I think it's still super potent. They can also go for like a position for Ricky if they really wanted to, but definitely not as uh, as stable. Maybe a little bit too crazy here with the yeah. Kunkka, but would force him into the hard five, and that's not really where he wants to be. Yeah, probably just going to be uh, one of those other bad boys. I mean, Oracle's still in the pool, so they could go for that. Unlikely you'll see it from NP. I don't think you want Shadow Demon plus Oracle, right? You want your own little bit of an aggressive four hero here. Um, the Elder Titan's still in the pool for SVG. He's uh, unfortunately kind of slow up against that Batrider, but mm -hmm. uh, it is kind of one of their signature heroes, so might be what they go for. Mm, doesn't do too well against Lifestealer, though, which is kind of nice. That might be one of the nice reasons why they're going for it here from Infamous, too. Like, um, not an agi hero, so his armor is not super important or anything. Um, the aura doesn't do that much to him. A nice little pick, then. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm digging Lifestealer a little bit more here. Uh, he doesn't match up the best against Juggernaut compared to some of those other heroes like Ursa and Sven. He can't just man up and totally chunk them on down. 
it's a, a much more even match. Maybe it'll give him a little bit of an edge, but you know, he gets into like an echo save or something like that, and he can uh, fight you down when you're spinning or something. Yeah, I mean, another thing to note for NP is Envy's Razor has been banned out finally. Uh, Infamous just don't want to let him get his hands on that. So they do have to pick up a, another mid hero for him. I mean, what's a good option up against the Lifestealer? You're going to have that magic immunity, so it's it's not so easy to just go for spammy spell heroes. Uh, Sand King picked up. Do you think that's going to be the secondary support or the offlane? Yeah. I think that's for SVG. Um, that's how we've seen them play it before. It works better against the Bat Rider than someone like that Elder Titan. Uh, it's good against the Life Stealer, just if you can get him before the Rage, obviously, kind of similar like your Silences. Uh, I'm wondering who is. Oh, Infamous have last pick again. Man, this is so nice when you have Bat Rider, Life Stealer, and last pick. Yeah. So um, they can. Again, there's not the best control. I mean, Sand King's pretty good, right? But then, like Shadow Demon, there really isn't still that Hex, like that Lion, that sort of um, thing up against these very classic Infamous Kataro heroes. So. Maybe we'll see a, a storm spirit for like the bombs, a puck for the bombs, uh, something to help Crystal out this life stealer. All right, that is an interesting support here. I mean, when a CCM picked up eight times out of ten, probably it's with the Juggernaut um, as a, a laning duo. Is CM gonna be babysitting the life stealer? Is she just gonna be doing her own thing in the jungle? Is life stealer jungle? What is happening with Infamous right now? Uh, it's a support that they were going for. I remember before this tournament when I was like looking them up and stuff, they were playing quite a bit of Crystal Maiden. Uh, they'd use it with like the Faces Void sometimes, um, even with just like the Ogre, just a nice little roaming duo. Kind of similar here with the Kunkka, I think. Um, it helps him roam around for sure in that early game. You know, the raindrop generally is enough mana, but just uh, a couple points on Arcane Ores can make it a little bit easier. There's no big counter coming out like an Enchantress or something that you're using the Frostbite for, but uh, she can farm up decently well, help the stacks. And that'll be the Void for NP this time. So this is their tried and true combo. The Nemesis Void with the Sand King. Uh, the hmm. Could they grab the Elder Titan? I think, no, I think it's just going to be SVG on the Sand King. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, if Envy was going to play it, but I, I don't think they run that mid. As glorious of a combination it is. Um, <laughs> Envy's heroes are so weird, though, eh? Like, he really does just play these very... What? Oh, You're I, so I do. I'm surprised you actually noticed. I do it like all the time. <laughs> oh man. Um, the uh, or was I? <laughs> Damn you! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Envy's here. So, it's okay. Oh yeah, right. Uh, oh, Timber. Timber. Uh, Envy Timber work. here. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Hmm. I like it. Yeah, something they should consider now for Infamous going in to their last pick here. They definitely need some more damage. Batrider's great for control. Same story with Kanka. Lifestealer's fine, but they need some sort of, you know, follow-up damage. If Lifestealer's locked down, if he's killed off, Infamous got nothing else. I'm sure you ban Storm. Um, does decently against, like, Jug mid if they end up sending it there. More than likely, you're probably going to have a decent hero against Storm mid that you pick here for Envy. But uh, we've, we've seen, if they're willing to take Storm mid against the, uh, the Razor, I think you just ban Storm. Yeah. I mean, why would you bother, right? Like, <laughs> who wants to play against that? It's Kataro. He, you know, he goofed a couple times last game, but not going to happen. <laughs> well, I have to see. Again, game number three, it's all on the line here. Winner gets to go straight on through to the Grand Finals. And, of course, winner of the Grand Finals gets a spot at the LAN in Montreal. Going to be a lot of fun at the uh, the Bell Center here. I know you're, you're a huge fan of Bell, so we're excited Woo! to be going here. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be some great Dota got to get through there you got to get that one qualifier spot and be onto it's their tough. last pick i mean could could it be the timber it's so tanky yeah, it's and so timber. bulky and so hard to drag around the map but i think it's got to be that you've got the synergy with the unless we're going here. nvtv do they believe i mean this is upper bracket is Maybe this terrible is it yeah it could I mean, be with the Shadow Demon. It would make a lot of sense to go for an illusion-based hero. All right. If it's lower bracket, I think they Timber Saw. Because it's upper bracket, I think they actually Terror Blade. Oh, That's boring. That's close <laughs> enough. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's going to be shabby. farming up. NP have the potential now to go relatively late game. I mean, Morphling needs 10, 15 minutes of farm before he wants to participate in anything. Faceless Void only gets better with time. Same story with Juggernaut. So uh, NP are going to be trying to play safe, have very defensive lanes. Infamous are trying to go a little bit more all in. They're going to have that roaming Kanka. Bat just has to get his lasso and he's going to try to make stuff happen. Infamous are going to be a little more aggressive here. So their last pick hopefully reflects that. 
So it should be up against the jug mid. Um, pretty much freedom, right? Like, you're not uh, too concerned. Alchemist. No one gets totally down. Oh, they do do the alk. So this is like the classic combination of the Crystal Bane plus the Alchemist. Because he can just spam nonstop uh, in the mid lane with Acid Spray, which is pretty sick. Mm -hmm. um, it's a hero that we've seen a couple South American teams go for in these, you know, clutch situations, right? We saw uh, Not Today was opting for it with the whole tune build and whatnot, but... The uh, mid versus the jug. Uh, again, it's like that situation where you know jug's going to be mid. It's going to be envy. You can kind of pick a, a hero that's just going to be whatever the hell you want. And here's going to be their decision. I mean, is there going to be kill power on the juggernaut? Are they going to be rotating in the crystal maiden and the kunkka? Or is it just going to be Alk trying to farm up and not do anything crazy? Uh, I don't know what Kataro builds. I don't know if he's like also so staunchly against the um, that whole Radiance build, right? Because we never saw a tune do it. Mm -hmm. uh, what's our game here? Morphling faces Void, Sand King, it, Life Stealer timing. It gets timings. scary at that like 40 minute mark. NP is just going to be coming at you like bullets. Yeah, I'm not sure. I would, I wouldn't mind the early game timing, right? Like if he just wants to get that armlet and whatnot, and Sanjinyasha and fight into the side of NP. You could see that working out well for them. Under farm Juggernaut not having that much damage, perhaps. You know the Chronospheres and whatnot. The, uh, there certainly would be an argument for that if you want to go into like the later parts of the game where you're just going for this Radiance, Manta, Octarine split push, then you're up against Morphling, uh, Faceless Void, Sand King. There's not like the best pick off. It could work. I guess it's probably just personal preference. We got uh, a <laughs> Kataro just taunting around, having fun on the Alk. I mean, Alk is a little curious here because I thought Infamous were going to go with something a little bit more early to mid game focused. And yeah, Alk can farm really, really quickly and he's going to have a huge net worth advantage. But can he turn that into one fights? So they're all just big melee bruisers. I mean, Crystal Maiden and Bat are your only ranged heroes and they're not doing a whole lot of right click. So you got to be all up in NP's face, but they've got crazy positioning tools. They've got the jug spinning away. They've got Chronospheres. They've got waveforms and burrow strikes. It's going to be hard to connect onto NP. Yeah, if he goes, like, armlet SNY, though, I could definitely see them just running over NP. I think that uh, even without a defensive support, just the boat run would be enough that they could really take some of those early game fights. Seems to me it would kind of fit their style a little bit better, too. But we shall see. We will indeed. There's going to be pings out. They know SVG is here. It's kind of dangerous for him to walk up so aggressively. But in the end, just going to be a 1-1 one -one rune split. No action happening just yet. Uh, and when the action does go down, I mean, what timing point are infamous hoping for what's going to be their green light to start fighting and pushing as five uh well what do you have here you have your bat rider is matched up against the faceless void for mss so pretty much just easy gaming here for uh king tekka nice play by mss just get the first wave give himself a little bit of experience for free but you'll probably see the drums right um oh actually the only downside with drums this game is that you uh, you don't really have your jungle. I mean, you kind of do, but you assume that Kataro's probably going to be snagging up into that. So we'll see. Probably just drums, though. If you get a good lane, you can stay there long enough to get drums first, then go into your blink, and then that will be your uh, general timing. Gives enough time for Benhaz to get up into some items like the armlet, the SNY. Um, the, well, probably armlet Echo Saber these days, of course, but... Over here those, in the jungle, we're going to have Stinger getting caught up. There's going to be a Burrow Strike available in five seconds, but I think the Kanka makes it to freedom. Uh, the rest of the Radiant support's bullying him out. Uh, now, Aoi on the morph, he definitely needs a lot of time to himself, a lot of time without pressure. He needs to just free farm. So, Lifestealer and Crystal Maiden have to make his life hell. What's the most effective way to do that? Uh, cast spells. <laughs> you know, right? I mean, throw out some Ws, a little bit of damage. Um, there's not a whole lot they can do. There's not a ton of kill potential. 1437 has some pretty great harassing stuff. Uh, the only downside, I guess, would be SVG can't do too much in this lane, right? It's kind of awkward for a Sand King. He almost just wants to, like, stay, leech, get caustic, and then go farm the jungle or something. Yeah, I mean, uh, there is potential stinger. for him to jungle pretty effectively if things go a little bit south here. But then you leave Aoi to his own devices. He's going to get torrented up in the air here. But uh, nothing else really going forward. Burrow Strike connects, though. Stinger could be in some trouble. The waveform, it's there. Kanka, oh, nice. will he be for his blood? He does end up falling down. So going to be a nice little bit of gold going the way. How does that uh, even happen? Like... I think how, how do you get level one burrow strike without a setup? I mean, the setup was that Kunkka hit a torrent and wanted to harass the Morphling, so he was a little bit far forward himself, and so it was easy to wrap around and turn things on him. Now, mid lane. I don't know if you've seen Torrent's cast range. 
It is far. But it's, it's pretty big. Well, yeah, but then he walked forward <laughs> being like, all right, let's get like one strike. Let's, let's get, get him, guys. Let's get a little poke on him. But no, yeah. no. If they're ever going to kill Morphling, it's all on the Crystal Mains positioning. It's going to be super awkward because you have to be like back here when you're killing Morphling up here and he like waveforms into you and then you W him or something. I don't know. It's just they really don't have the best heroes for killing AUI in lane. Right. SVG can freely <laughs> contest the stack and make sure that they can't get that so they can't pull on over because he's a Sand King and it's great. Mm -hmm. It's a hard game. Yeah, it's it's looking pretty good for this bottom lane. Now let's take a little bit of a break and look at this mid. Uh, EE -E having a bit of trouble just dealing with the acid spray. He had to put uh, a nice early point in that healing ward. He's doing a decent amount of job harassing the Alk, but last hits are not ideal. Alk almost doubling him up. Uh, and in this top lane, Void is just taking a beating from the Batrider, who's getting a ton of farm, second only to his own Alchemist. Yeah, this is the dream. Like, unlimited mana, basically, is the Alchemist, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Crystal Maiden. Once she gets another level, probably get the uh, second point into the Aura, too. All and, right, Burrow uh, Strike connects onto Benjaz. Is he going to be okay here? He's got the Rage, but now Aoi not going to follow up there with that waveform. Kanka sitting in the wings. He's got the Torrent. He's thinking about it, but is not going to go and, uh, and pop it onto the Morph. So, again, just a lot of passive play from Infamous down bottom. Six heroes committed to just trying to get this Morph some free farm, trying to get Benjaz some free farm. Uh, and maybe the Lifestealer will just man up and rage and kill off the morph eventually, but for now it's pretty tough. Yeah, King Tekka's back at base at full HP. Not sure what he was up to. Just kind of missed that one up top, I guess, just pushed it out a bit and waiting for the next wave, but uh, no stacks really for him. Stone Farm is not, not too heavy right now. I don't know. He's behind MSS. Yeah, I mean, this Void all of a sudden enough. just comes out of nowhere. He was you having some trouble, but then just grabbed all the last hits of a wave when Batrider was back at base, and now it's going to be a little bit tougher for Bat to keep exerting that lead. I don't know. That seems... I, I really... I don't know. I must have missed something top. I don't know why he walked all the way back to base. He like wasn't he is that low. He, he was probably Maiden. about two-thirds health. Oh, Crystal Maiden goes in for the Frostbite here onto the Shadow Demon, but not very impactful whatsoever. Just going in. Popping out some uh, some more poison stacks, keeping the Kunkka at bay. I mean, is the Life Stealer getting enough out of this lane? He's getting some good farm, but he does want to kill relatively early. Crystal Maiden, Kanka, they're not going for those setups yet on the support. Should they be a bit more aggressive or let Life Stealer get you know Phase Boots armlet? I don't know. It's kind of weird because like Kunkka's not doing anything right now, right? Yeah, he's just been like, sitting just back. He's chilling level at level two. Crystal Bane's been forced to go 0 2 1, which isn't an ideal build, especially up against a Sand King and a Morphling. Like, your Frostbite doesn't even do anything. You really got to contest some of that farm with your Q if you can get it now. They're moving forward, maybe trying to look onto SVG. Maybe just trying to get some of these stacks. SVG is going to get Frostbitten up. There will be a Torrent to follow up with the Burrow Strike away. Ben Jazzman's up. There is going to be that Disrupt to try to keep him safe. So Shadow Demon contributing here. Will he be able to spray out any more poison? Finally, they do oh, end up losing the Sand King, but it's a neutral kill. Owie, he could be in some trouble here, though. He's morphing a bit of strength. There is going to be the Torrent catches up the Shadow Demon, but that's going to be the end of the fight here. No more blood, only the Sand King going down to neutrals. And Infamous not even really able to fully clean out that stack. A couple of the creeps did go the way of NP. So uh, for all the resources invested, Infamous get relatively little. Uh, it was nice, though, because they now they actually have some semblance of control in here. They managed to get the ward down. That helps them get into good positioning, because if you're just caught up by like that one burrow that we saw before, that's what makes it really difficult for the Kunkka to actually get in there. But when you actually have vision of SVG, it's much harder for him to find that good initiation angle, and you can try and punish him for once. Top lane MSS is forced back here. He is sitting on Chrono. Wait, what? What? Oh, he's just holding his next point. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> not not going to drop it in stats just yet. He's just like holding on to it. I guess hoping someone's going to rotate. Then he'll just put it into bash or something if mm -hmm. someone's going to come. But anyway. Yeah, I think it depends if he's going to be trying to rotate mid and be that roamer or if someone's roaming in to help him. But either way, this tower looks like it's going to be going down. Alk wants nothing to do with it. He's bailed out into the jungle, leaving EE to get plenty of farm here. Picks up his first tower and looks like he's just going to go continue to pressure the wave. The scan does reveal that Alk and friends are up here and they're going to be bringing in their tools. They've got SVGs sitting back. Only level 3, so certainly no epicenter. But these supports are just obnoxious, stealing up Alk's farm, which is super, super crucial at this point in the game. Yeah, really nicely done, too. They drop a ward down here as well. This is, um, I mean, obviously this was the last pick, Alchemist, but one of the things that we used to see when Alchemist was 
super in the meta was the juggernaut picks, the gyrocopter picks, those kind of heroes that could come in and fight inside that jungle relatively early on to contest these. So having a juggernaut in the mid lane makes it super Bat easy. King Rider. Tekka. Okay, Torrent will latch onto one. King Tekka might be in trouble. Will get disrupted up there. Don't want him to get the high ground. There will be the Chrono popped out. MSS revealing that gets two in there. Excel going to be trapped up. CM, one more hit, and she will end up going down to Shadow Poison. They reinitiate here onto Stinger. Nice little burrow strike. Buys him some time. There will be a Torrent catching him up, but the Omni Slash. Oh, EE -E is having the time of his life. The body blocks, the bashes. The Alchemist is about to go down too as ulti can't save him now. It's a four for nothing trade. Shadow Demon gets low, may just buy out and deny or just shamble back to base. Meanwhile, Morph was farming the entire time. That is just about the perfect fight for NP. Yeah, they're coming in with leveled up supports. They're coming in with superior vision thanks to this ward. And they're just kind of camping on stacks and letting the entirety of Infamous run into them. Doesn't really get much better than that. First Chrono used in the best possible scenario. They're going to try and smoke up now to take advantage of that, um, knowing that there's nothing that's really going to be able to contest them, I suppose. And can you even kill AUI, though? They're going to tell... Oh, a haste rune. Okay. Yeah, this I mean, they're, they're going to have some success. If it's coming out, it's coming out here. That's like a four-man rotation down with a haste, with all their spells ready to go. So Yeah, he should be dead. Morphling is pushed out pretty far. Does have the waveform and the replicate available. So depending on those fast fingers... Yeah, will he be able to get back here? He's going to get dragged into the lasso, but he's fallen slowly. He has that strength morph up. Torrent comes in. They do get the pick onto the Morphling. Unfortunately, that is pretty crucial. It's 300 gold. Goes to the Crystal Maiden, so hurrah. She can buy some shoes. She can buy some wards. Look at that. She is just rich. Making it King Tekka sticks himself on a cliff on accident. Nice. Cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, there's a rotation in. King oh, Tekka. they know. They know he's on the cliff. <laughs> They've got the tools to catch up to him, too. They're just stacking Shadow oh, Poison no. for all it's worth. Oh, God, and the melee range is enough. Batrider flew too close to the sun. Oh, oh man. Whew, that hurts. All right. So one, uh, one free kill goes right back. You know, sometimes you get a haste tune for a free kill, and sometimes the enemy cliffs themselves for a free kill. That's just Dota 2, guys. Dota 2 is a, uh, a very mercurial game just switching back and forth all the time now ee -E, he's having some fun down bottom finally getting a chance to harass this life stealer obviously too many creeps around to go in for that omni slash but i mean look how much damage is being done ee -E's yeah he's gonna force him back okay he's gonna be coming out full health but again if ee -E can navigate this guy away from the creeps omni slash oh, is nice. just gonna be solo yolo the spin under the tower there will be a rotation coming in from the bat rider Damn doesn't even fool. matter they already get down the position one core there's a lasso coming up in 10 seconds but this healing ward is helping envy out there's a tp in from the faceless void who has that uh the chrono available yeah they just got played on honestly that was just styling on him and there's going to be that blade fury to follow up if they need to get through the trees pretty quickly and there we go bat rider flapping over this little crevasse and we'll be able to get back safely but i mean still infamous rotated down a lot of heroes for that they spent up virtually everything they got and they may still lose their kunkka right now he's gonna be popping out he goes for the torrent to try to clip onto envy but it's not gonna work and stinger just goes trying to pale himself out of danger but shadow demon gets the pick on that so kill score eight to one np oh, have man. come alive right now and meanwhile aoi farming up the enemy jungle he's gonna be going in towards that uh lincoln's first item Every time they get a win, they just throw it away. Like, Chrono just gets used, nothing happens, and your Kunkka just walks into three heroes. Yeah, and this tower, know. it's going to be going down just like the mid tower did, and there's nothing Infamous can do to stop it. And we talked in draft about how Infamous have, you know, a more early to mid game focused lineup. They've got that aggressive play. They need to be going in for those aggressive maneuvers, but it has just been turned around on them every single time. So even with hard farming heroes like an alchemist, they're not getting a whole lot done in heroes that are traditionally a little bit later focused. The the Void, the Juggernaut, uh, the Morphling, they're already participating in these really nice fights. Now SVG, that was cool. Okay, Lasso spent up, but Bro strikes out of it. He will still lose his life here. Battle of Fire and Ice eventually overtakes the Scorpion, but all the carries will get out safely. And um, we, uh, I mean, you can kind of tell from the build, but Kitaro, he, well, now he finally puts a point on Silver Concoction, but either way, judging by his build, it is, in fact, the Radiance and the fact that he's, you know, still sitting on 3k gold, just important to mention. But the way this game's going, I don't think that early game finding guild build is really an option, right? Like, they're just getting walked over in those other lanes. Uh, your life is not really at a point that you guys can just group up and suddenly win Dota 2, so... Yeah, the lane game becomes the important idea here for the Alchemist. And so many games we've seen, it just get completely turned around. It doesn't matter how badly you are losing. 
If you just win that one fight, once these items are up on Alchemist, it's so hard to actually wrangle the lanes back into a position where you can take objectives as, uh, as the opponents of it. So, um, game goes later and later. Things like this, uh, Kunkka actually do scale pretty well as support, right? He gets up into, like, his armlet, his chrysalis, and everything. It's not ideal. Like, it's not like NP are falling off and it's crazy or oh, it's bad or anything, Taka. but... <laughs> He's just getting soloed down by a shadow demon here. Poison oh, Collect close. not going to be enough. And now Shadow Demon's in some trouble. Just went out a little bit too deep. And it is going to take a four-year rotation to finally bring him down. Kunkka finally picks up his first kill of the game. So he's going to be moving closer towards uh, whatever item he wants to go for here. Meanwhile, EE, -E, he's not messing around. He's wrapping around between the Tier 2 and the Tier 3. Waiting for perhaps an Omni Slash. Going to be using MSS to try to scare away some people. Got the Chronosphere at the ready. Eternal Envy now charging in. Uh, does not hold back. Just Omni Slash soloing down the Kanka, just getting in there and demoralizing Stinger. And they're looking to get more here. King Tekka does grab the lasso onto SPG, but even if you drag him up onto the cliff, he's still got that Burrow Strike to get down eventually. Now MSS moving forward, continuing to punish Tekka. Can they get the bash? That's going to be the big question. Looks like Batrider should be able to escape. Envy's going to back off, opting not to give away a big lead. Meanwhile, down bottom is just going to be Shadow Demon playing around with Benjaz. The position 5 feeling comfortable harassing the position 1. Okay, so action all across the map here, but uh, as you just mentioned, wisely done here by Envy, just backs on up, takes the free tower, and uh, the Radiance is getting closer and closer. Looking to be pretty decently timed considering the overall positioning of the Radiance side. They might look to fight here, they bring in Owie, he just replicates back up to the top lane, MFSS is going to be X marked, so he just goes in, casts the Chrono, and is able to get off the time dilation. Meanwhile, on the back lines, there is going to be that Infest Bomb coming back out, Ben Jazz gets a little bit of health moving forward, so Chrono being spent, but not a whole lot of fighting. There is no Lasso on the Batrider, who's still playing really far forward here. Not going to get caught out by the Burrow Strike this time, but uh, definitely a quirky engage there. I think NP, you know, they were ready to go. They had that <laughs> Divine Mode on, but didn't actually have the resources to get it done. Now, there is going to be a little Burrow Strike here onto Kataro. Even through that uh, Chemical Rage, I think he's, he's completely fine. All right, well, infamous Dota. How do they get back in this one? The Radiance and whatnot. On its way, that's very important, but uh, one problem we kind of talked about happening this game with King Tekka would be the farm distribution between him and the Alchemist. And now at 15, you know, 14 and a half minutes, he's now just finished up into the drums, which is pretty disappointing. It's very difficult when you have to try and not only farm uh, a jungle and, and share it with an Alchemist, but just because you have an Alchemist, that pressure Look at the comes Shadow from the Demon radiant. just bullying this nah, Alchemist. He's, he's fine. He is just completely I'm pretty sure he's solo. just suiciding. Yeah, he's just going to kamikaze this, but. <laughs> I think the Alchemist might still be dead, because in the backlands we are going to have Eternal Envy up. There's going to be King Tekka flying in, he's got the lasso, meanwhile Excel coming in, doesn't have enough mana for the ulti, so this is actually not so great for NP. There's going to be the Omni Slash coming in, but not doing a whole lot of damage. NP's in some serious trouble, now Crystal Maiden dances, she dies, but NP gets stuck up with the Unstable Concoction, there is an Epicenter on the background, and Stinger is going to feel the full wrath of that, the Flame Break, not enough to save up their core. So two are dead, they're looking to lose another one here, they do end up dropping the Life Stealer. Batrider, he's super low on the back lines, but King Tech is Playing this one safe, just dropping out some napalm, getting those slows. Oh, SVG! He continues to pressure up. He may end up diving here. Oh my gosh, SVG is still alive and they pick off the Alchemist. They're looking to make it a full wipe here. MSS, he's got that leap up in two seconds. One second, does he push forward? Can he get the bash onto King Tekka? There's going to be the TP in from the Crystal Maiden, and that's going to be the end of the fight. TP canceled, but Batrider survives still. Bloody engaged. They lose the Juggernaut, which is not ideal, but trading for four heroes, absolutely worthwhile. Yeah, that was, uh, that was something else. I'm not sure. I didn't get the full... Well, you never get the full recap when it goes that long, but uh, maybe uh, a little bit over-aggressive here from NP. Just kind of flexing their muscles, right? 1437 going down solo with the Alchemist, trying to get some pressure on. It did make it so that he was a little bit weaker, like, coming to the fight and whatnot. I had to pop alt maybe a little bit earlier than he'd want to, yada, yada, yada. But um, I don't think... I didn't see, like, the boat come out you know, fantastically either. It didn't really get a, a nice setup going here for the Dire side. So they still haven't had that, like, big fight that maybe they could win, but that looked fairly good considering, you know what I mean? Like, they're they're in the hole, right? This is not going to be an easy game Dota 2 for them. SVG now has a Blink Dagger. This is probably where you're going to see NP start to push out a little bit more, drop down more of this vision. Again, still keeping good eyes over inside this Dire side jungle, trying to see what our little Alchemist is up to, who's almost up into his Yasha, so... Manta not too far away at this point, and Benaz, well, he's still pretty poor. Yeah, I mean, Elk, he's top of the net worth chart, which you absolutely expect him to be at 15 or 16 minutes in with four points in greed. 
Uh, but his game impact has been pretty low. He's two and three. He hasn't really been doing a whole lot in these huge fights, and now he's going to get another chance to prove himself as there's a warding mission coming in. MSS has the chrono, followed up by the Shadow Demon, who's had a huge impact so far in terms of the amount of Shadow stacks he's just spread Yeah, up. he is dead. All right, so Void goes in. No mercy, just trapping out this chrono sphere. It's not going to be doing a whole lot except for isolating Kataru. And there is going to be that epicenter available if SVG wants to go for it. He's going to get lassoed up, though. Envy has to be really, really careful here. He already spent the Omni Slash and didn't get a whole lot accomplished. They get the Elk low, but Elk is still up. He's still surviving. Goes for the self-stun here. Not sure if he was looking for the Deny or looking for a reinitiation. He didn't find it, but either way, he's hitting the deck. They can't seem to stun Ben Jazz, and they don't have enough damage to finish him off. So it's going to be CM and Elk dropping for the uh, Sand King, but after a successful ulti, it's fine if Sand King goes down. Yeah, that was weird. I I just assumed that Alpha was going to die in Chrono from, like, Epicenter being added in or something like that. But SVG was trying to hold on to it, I think, just trying to clean up, like, the back lines. Uh, it's pretty important that he is kind of vigilant of that Crystal Maiden. You don't want the whole fight getting turned around because she just finds a little nook and starts ulting or something. And, um, you know, it's kind of hard to reach with something like Disruption. And maybe it's going to be just on him to make sure he blinks and gets a good burrow. Um, so may maybe that's why. But it was, kinda, it was a little bit awkward. I thought it was going to be a little bit crisper considering their nice vision into that fight. Envy staying in here, there's going to be uh, a little bit of an X going forward. They want to punish out the Shadow Demon. does still have the Self Disrupt available, so he's going to buy himself some time. But this is going to be a tricky fight. There's no Omni, there's no huge spells. Nice Burrow Strike connecting onto a couple into the Sandstorm. Envy's still spinning. He's still going out. MSS looking for those bashes, but they are few and far between. Now the stun comes in, will connect onto the Sand King. So unfortunately, this Arachnid does go down again. Now the, there's going to be that uh, EE. He is going to be torrented up. He doesn't have the spin. There he goes. He's got the Omni, though. He's just going to unleash. It's going to be clipping around to a couple of targets. He's trying to connect onto Stinger and is able to do so, courtesy of the Blade Fury. Meanwhile, the rest of this fight goes awry as, uh, well, Katara goes for the self-stun. Now, Aoi, he comes in. This Morphling has had unlimited free farm so far in the game. Now with a Lincoln Spear, he's standing under the Acid Spray, which is not super great, but Adaptive Strike just forces Katara back, almost taking him out. Armlet saving his ass right there. Now, oh, man. And he's thinking hunting. about it. And he's thinking about it. Oh, there's going to be that chemical rage, though. So buying a little bit of time, it's going to be a lot more difficult. And there's the taunt from the Alk as he gets out of a very, very risky fight. Yeah, they're sending some of these defensive options up here from the dire side. Um, sentry and board over here as well. So they haven't quite found the opportunity to knock down this one here from the dire. But, or rather from the raiding, I suppose. But maybe they'll find it. Oh, there's the pinks now from the Kunkka. Alright, so looking okay. at the net worth distribution, it's going to be Katara sitting way up top, which you expect for an Alec, but then the three next heroes are going to be on the side of NP, and you know, this Lifestealer has had a very difficult road. Now, 1, 3, and 5, looks like he's going for that Echo Saber, but it is just really slow going. How does this Lifestealer get back in this? I mean, it's a game where they just hope that maybe they can catch some of these supports, like trying to be a little bit greedier, like right now, they get in a Fest Bomb. Uh, use that rage to take down someone like SVG or 1437, who both have been doing some of those like individual efforts where they're just going around trying to farm creeps, trying to get bigger items past just like this blink dagger or maybe like a glimmer cape or something for 1437 after his forest staff. Uh, and then if they can get any sort of a pick, whether it's one of these supports or a core, Roshan then becomes an option. And uh, with the help of Alchemist, and then just the lifestyle should be okay. So MSS, he's got a chrono. Well, that's Alchemist Radiant deep illusions. into enemy territory, and we are going to have MSS doing what he can. The boat connects, though, so MSS taking a lot of damage. There's the follow-up. They have the Epi rocking through, even through the armlet, even through the Chemical Rage. Just too much damage for the Alk to stand. They aren't able to go through and break the Kunkka's TP, but they got what they really wanted, which is killing Alk off for a minute with no buyback now, and just slowing down his farm at this crucial 20-minute mark is so, so useful right there. That's going to be, you know minor gold and XP going in NP's favor, but they're just continuing to hit the pause button on Alex's farm, and he's rapidly falling behind. Yeah, it's uh, obviously never too good when your Alchemist lineup is this far behind the overall net worth. It's okay to be behind, but like 6k? Alright, game, so uh, they get the Roche, it's free for NP, and it's just um, a situation where, like, I don't know, Alk pretty deep on his lonesome. It's caught out. They had some vision. Or maybe, yeah, it was thrown down by... Uh, yeah, it was, so I don't know. He's trying to make plays, you know, got to find farm somewhere. All right, so but, moving uh, forward, looks like they're finally going to be able to go and finish off this last tier two. Shadow Demon gets those high value illusions. EE is just hitting like an absolute champ now, sitting on 4k gold. What's the Juggernaut looking for here? Does it go into the Manta? 
Oh, oh my, oh, here's a Morris. big fight coming in. They've got the lasso, but the Omni Slash bouncing around. King Tekka might not get to see the fruits of his labor to go in. And there's going to be Aoi morphing strength. He's getting low. There's a gem on the deck. EE -E trying to spin away from danger. He could be in a little bit of trouble here. Pops out the healing ward, but it's immediately punished. Oh, they get that down. Too. And that's going to be the Aegis picked off. He buys out the makings of a battle fury before he goes down. Alk is looking for that stun. They've got the follow up. Now, SVG comes in. There's going to just be mass stuns all around. Unfortunately, the Jarkonaut does go down. Life Stealer getting the credit for that one, so really, really nice fight for Infamous. They only lose their Bat Rider and they kill off five heroes if you count the Aegis and the Jug. Yeah, and that's uh, the workings of the Octarine Core almost being completed up here for Katara now. So, uh, yeah, that Battle Fury definitely going to be the right item choice here for Envy. They have not fully just like knocked out this game. You can't just go for this like combat build or a siege, you know, sometimes, sometimes you just get like a random ass death or something like that for your Jug and you just want to go high ground and end the game. Not so much this time. There's going to have to be some sort of a lane control coming out because Paro is getting big. But what a torrent, by the way. Man, Stinger just totally recovering. I mean, he had such a bad early game. Just uh, completely underleveled, very underfirmed as a Kunkka. He's way at the bottom. I mean, at this point now, though, he's actually caught up and now surpassed 1437 thanks to that or the uh, kill on the tower there. And if he can pick up a Veil, if that's actually what... Oh, sorry, his armlet. Jeez, whew, wrong hero. Yeah. <laughs> you okay there, uh, buddy? Almost, almost done. Dude, we got like three more games tonight. I need you fresh. <laughs> no, he's got this so easy peasy. Oh, he bought a force staff. Interesting. So, oh, is that because Batrider? Nice. All right, so Batrider can't afford one, right? Now you actually have like some sort of a pickoff option. It's also his own saving up against like Chronosphere and stuff like that. So really neat. Uh, not going greedy. You know, you could definitely see Akunka just finishing out his armlet right now to, to farm out these waves a little bit faster, increase his own uh, net worth into something bigger, but just deemed that that four staff's going to be way too important. Mm -hmm. So all of NP, I mean, that was a pretty impactful fight. Looking at the overall net worth chart, they were kind of edging towards that 10k lead territory, but just dropping down to below 5k lead now. So NP, they've got to have a successful fight or a successful push in the upcoming minutes or Infamous might start to take this over. Getting a little bit spooky. I don't know, you still have a window, right? I mean, there's no Mantis style of white yet for the Alchemist, but I mean, it's an offering course. We just gonna farm up super fast. Um, that, the, if they still had Aegis, I would be feeling so much better as NP right now, you know? You could actually, like, mount another uh, attack into the base, or you could at least feel comfortable going aggressive and trying to get that big pick. You know, you feel like you have some sort of an advantage in a fight, but at this point, uh, do you do you really feel like you have one? Who are you, um, as AUI, you know, you have your E-Blade. Uh, ideally, you're blowing up, like, I guess the Batrider is the dream, but King Tekka, of course, can be very difficult to grab, and... Uh, you know, Life Stealer's gonna pop Rage. Mm -hmm. Alchemist is extremely difficult to bring down. Our game. So this rotation's oh, they actually killed been it. pinged out. Yeah, just one slap of EE e. sword. They were going for that sneaky wraparound to try to just take some sort of fight behind the remnants of their tier one. Now they might find something in the jungle here. EE's e. is actually one to get frozen up. There's gonna be a chrono. Everyone from both teams stuck inside. EE e. trying to fight. There will be the epicenter coming back in to get the first strike onto King Tekka. That's gonna be a nice kill gem on the deck. SVG made his contribution. He's just gonna be bailing out. EE e. oh. left alone in Rage the fire. Oh, there we go. Owie just comes in with that little adaptive strike and a nice burrow strike forward, dodging out the boat damage, wanting to go on to Stinger, but I think this Kanka might survive. It's really only the Sand King able to get himself there. They bring in the Shadow Demon. Can they disrupt to buy some time? I just don't think he's gonna get close enough. He's popping out the torrent, trying to prevent the chase, but either way, still a phenomenal fight. There's gonna be a nice little blink forward from the SK, and they get the disrupt. They should be able to take out uh, this little Admiral. He's trying his best, but he hit the bash key. MSS hit the bash key and they are able to get the kill. So in the end, four heroes go down, Alki is able to get out, but uh, really nice fight for NP. They get the courier, they get their pickoffs, they lose a tier one, but now they feel safe back on the dire side of the map. Yeah, that was really odd though. It, it seems Infamous just felt so pressured to get something done in that scenario, but once Envy like attacks a courier back here, um, they didn't see anyone else on the map, like they had decent vision down here. Kind of surprising that they still went for that pickoff up against the Shadow Demon, and uh, as you saw, I mean, 1437 just gets in the right spot, disrupts up onto Envy, can't continue to put on damage. Oh, uh, Kataro. That's not quite enough. Can't find him in between the toggles or anything. Yeah, I mean, Morphling's been doing really well. Uh, slightly low kill impact, 4, 1, and 5. I mean, it's still good. Aoi's been doing phenomenally. But we haven't even started to see the true power of the Morphling. It's only 26 minutes in, and Morph can scale well up to the 60-minute mark. So I'm excited to see what MP are going to be doing to continue their lead moving forward. But uh, 
they've, they've got to get it together. That last fight was a nice pullback in their favor, but Infamous, I mean, they're definitely still alive. They are ready to go. They are ready to fight and ready to drive back NP back onto their side of the map. Yeah, this kind of stuff that we're talking about, though, where it's just... Even when you win a fight like that, how do you actually pressure up against this Alchemist? It uh, just delays the game out further, longer. And uh, when you start to see a little bit of uh, itemization coming out, everyone else can be the Mantis style on MSS. Kind of standard faces void build here. The Envy, I assume will just be his butterfly. Good game for it. So it's a little bit of a slow burn here, Annie. Yeah, I mean, it's, definitely. Uh, what we come to expect. Heroes taking their time, scaling up. I think this is the right play by NP, though. If they get too YOLO, if they get too crazy, they can easily throw a lead. If the Juggernaut goes down a couple of times, if the Morphling goes down at all, it gets real difficult for NP to continue to take fights, especially up against an Alchemist that's still holding on to the top net worth slot by a huge margin. Now we've got the Life Stealer starting to feel impactful. I mean, he's still sitting pretty low on that net worth chart, but he's got his items. He's got a decent amount of damage, and I mean, he's pretty tanky. King Tekka goes in for that infest smoke gank. We'll see if he's going to find anything. He's got the Blink Lasso available. It's going to be pings out. It's all of Radiant are huddled up around their tier 1 tower. There's the Firefly, so no more being sneaky. They're just looking to dive forward and oh, find wow, he something. Oh, on the Kataro. And he did do that. Okay, Kataro takes an Omni Slash. Now, this is going to be a nice Chrono Sphere. MSS is going to get stuck All off right. the boat. The Torrent. This is not going great for NP whatsoever, but there's going to be a nice epicenter to try to buy this back in the favor. But Excel is still dancing on the back lines. Meanwhile, we've got Shadow Demon versus the world. There is going to be that freeze onto Envy. They do end up losing the Alchemist. Juggernaut played up forward. They get the kill on the Crystal Maiden. Can they stop this TP out? And Magic Community is just a little too pesky. Stinger could be in some trouble, but I don't know if they can really catch up to him. So double damaged Envy just stops to clean up the creep wave and three hits. And this could be some pressure onto the tier threes. Nicely done. I mean, you see what they're going for, right? Some sort of a bait play to come out there where, like, they kind of hop on and then the rest of the team comes from in behind. Uh, plans were being made. And I, I don't know. Katara was trying to do something where he had, like, Radiance turned off the entire time. And then right before he got disrupted, he had to turn, like, he turned it right back on. I think 1437 was just kind of waiting for that perfect moment. So well done by him. Um, but Nick, he didn't get any of the missed chance bonus up against Envy, so he just gets totally shredded. And down he went and died way too fast for him. He could actually get in there from NP, or rather from oh, Infamous. Team Tekka blinks forward, wants to be aggressive, but they know he's got no lasso. He's not fooling anyone. But SPG has to be careful, gets flame broken back a little bit too far. He's going to be scurrying himself away. Aoi is still in a really good position. These Morphling Illusions are able to clear out the Crystal Maiden. Oh, that's got to hurt. I mean, Crystal Maiden gets so fragile at this point in the game. Yeah, she's very poor. She has no options for like that. Like, Glimmer Cape is just the item that you kind of dream of having up against Morphling. As every support, Crystal Bane, generally one of those, even in the five rule supports, is someone that can almost always rely on getting one of those items because she can like farm jungle relatively early on. But mm -hmm. of course, in a game with an Alchemist and uh, all this like lane control and pressure and a Bat Rider who's still trying to catch up, she's getting zero space. She's a Kunkka that's also pushing out waves with Tidebringer and everything. So she's just total poverty mode the entire game. I mean, maybe, looks like she's crawling towards a Glimmer Cape, but yeah. it is going to be a long road. So certainly no Ags, no BKBs, nothing fancy for her. No, there's no uh, there's no Puppy Heart. You know, Crystal Maiden come out here, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. You can keep dreaming. I, Never again. I, I think it's okay if that dies forever. Now, Aoi, again, continuing to farm really well. Now picked up that Hurricane Pike. So on top of the shotgun, you now have extra mobility there, uh, extra little bit of damage moving forward, lots of stats. I'm liking how the Morphling's building, and still a 1,000 gold to go. Again, still early on in the game, only 30 minutes. This has the potential for NP to drag it out as late as they want, because all they're going to be doing is stopping the Alchemist from farming. He's five-slotted now. Eventually, you can sell the armlet to get another item, but it is... It's going to start dropping off for the Elk. He's done with his major early game impact. Yeah, it's, it's so funny to watch him, like, doing these Radiance plays. Because, like, if he can't see AUI, he's just keeping it off and everything. Like, Katara's doing everything he can. Trying to knock it, like, replicate Radiance or something like this from the Morphling. But, obviously, it's uh, not quite enough. Our sieging onto the high ground. Morphling Illusions. Talked about this uh, for so many days now. But, <laughs> Shadow Demon plus stat carries. Good stuff. Keep throwing them on in here. Lanes are in a good spot for this right now. Bottom lane. Gonna be pushing itself out here in just a moment. And it looks like Infants are going to be forced to fight this one out. Yeah, I mean, they've got to at least just sit back and take the push as it comes. But, I mean, since pre-TI, this Ooh. has been the meta. Just get those, you know, Morphling, PL, Luna. Just grab those Illusion carries. 
bubble them up and send them for a slow siege onto the tower. And Infamous have no other choice but to fully invest the Alchemist, uh, go for that Acid Spray, keep uh, Kunkka there to bring the Tidebringer in, uh, always keeping Torrents up. It's just such an annoyance for Infamous to deal with. One thing is nice though is that like they don't have the Manta, right? Because typically if the Manta's on the Alchemist, you're pushing these down and he's shoving them in the mid lane as well. So this kind of a plan doesn't work. Uh, so what they have to do instead is they have to take like Stinger out if the Alchemist were to like go mid or something. Uh, basically, they just don't have a solution to mid right now, which is the big problem. So it's just giving free reign to NP to sit here, hope they make a mistake, jump in on top of them. And until then, they can slowly rotate mid, keep pressuring in here, and then rotate down into the Roche pit. A single pit, or uh, rather, a single pick here from NP, and they're just going to go straight into the Aegis. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're looking, again, continuing this low siege. Uh, no one's getting too greedy, and I like this play. Is this a fake out play? Where they're pretending it's not actually AUI. Yeah, uh, well, there's the waveform, so he's just gonna drop the shotgun. Crystal Maiden. That was actually glorious, because he just walks in right under the ward. I mean, they just assume he's another one of the illusions, and then there's the waveform, there's the shotgun, there's the adaptive strike. Whoops, your Crystal Maiden's dead, and it's not super impactful. I mean, she's, like you mentioned, that position five, at this point, like position six, poor support. She can't do anything, uh, but I mean, still less players in the field, less people to go through. King Tech, I mean, they're still just waiting up here. King Tech and this life stealer, but NP aren't giving them anything. Now it's even the Maelstrom being brought out here for Mr. Kataro. Come on, do what he can. All right, so patience runs the game. They're having a ton of patience here. Are they wasting time? Should they focus on, you know, putting Envy in a different lane than the Shadow Demon Morph, or should they just kind of keep doing what they're doing and eventually starve out Infamous? The only problem is they don't have, like, it, the only thing they could do would be send AUI. Um, so maybe that could be an option, right? Like, if they just do um, Shadow Demon Illusions of Envy instead, because he also is, you know, stat heavy and he's the one sieging, and then AUI can be pushing another lane and replicate. But uh, even that's going to be difficult, because then you have to, like, be here, replicate, walk down, push or something. They just don't have any efficient movement around the map without oh. bots. I think in the oh, they're gonna think it's real. That's not good. That's oh. in that, that's so many ults. And now there's gonna be a chrono. Clips onto two. They go. They get the alchemist. They're gonna be focusing them down. Meanwhile, Benjaz is gonna be taking it on the back lines. There's gonna be an epicenter popped out. And even through the armlet, they just can't keep anyone alive here. They drop the CM. Kunkka just barely escapes right now. There's the disruption. They're moving forward. They're looking for more on the back lines. Batrider just gets dropped by Aoi with the waveform, and the GG comes out. Oh, and P. That was so sick. Oh my god, that was sick. Just sitting on the high ground here, so this illusion pops, like, it, this illusion made it look like it was the real hero because it popped their smokes. So immediately they jump on it, they waste everything, and that's just the game. That was... The ultra mind game from <laughs> NP. There's, that was definitely intentional. There's selectively few games where there's a single point, a single spell dropped that you're like, yep, that's what lost them the game, but... Unfortunately, jumping on that replicate may have been that moment. I think it was still looking pretty grim for Infamous, but maybe they could have held on a little bit longer, mounted one more big fight. But, I mean, with Lasso, Infest bomb down, boat down, there was just nothing left in the tank to focus down uh, the real NP. So, very, very well played. Infamous, they've got one more chance to redeem themselves here and move themselves on to the grand finals. So, we're not saying goodbye just yet. They're going to be going up in a best of three right now versus FDL. So you're going to want to stick around for that. More NA greats coming up. But uh, again, just very well played NP. They've earned a spot in the grand finals of the qualifier happening tomorrow at 4 p.m. Mountain, 6 p.m. EST, 3 p.m. PDT. So stick around for that. Going to be a lot of fun. I'm Android. That's Mott Packs. We're going to have another series coming up in just a little bit. Again, it is FDL versus Infamous. And that's going to be right here on Moonduck TV. So sit tight. More action coming at you in just a few minutes.